We're live, ladies and gents. Good evening to you. Dow is almost on a full round turn. It's almost like 10 past five. We just kicked into gear buying program. And well, we're still down a bit, but interesting. Some spice, a little bit downwards action for a change and then reverse. I uh, hope you all can hear me okay. I'm just checking all the dashboard up here. I think that looks good. Right, okay, ladies and gents, I'm going to get started straight away with this one. Thank you so much for joining me on this sunny but overcast. Yeah, it's actually quite bright. Hopefully nice and bright where you are. Uh, afternoon. The topic of today is going to be an interest, interesting one. And as per, I've done a lot of slides. I've really crammed a lot of stuff into this. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A section. There's a section or chat box section. I'll get to those at the end. I'll try and get to those at the end. If I don't, I'll definitely scan through them and maybe come back and, and try and get you an answer. Because um, I know that you know it's valuable that you get as much out of this as possible. So this is going to be a really interesting one. I think this is going to really help you out, this webinar. This is the sort of thing that many people struggle with and you know, will help you get moving forward, will help you get clarity, will help you remove a lot of the clutter and noise. Uh, before we get ahead of ourselves, the risk warning, please check out the risk warning, spread about safeties, um, you know, complex instruments, they're risky. Hopefully you know the score. If you don't, make sure you check it out, make sure you know what you're getting yourself in for. Very, very, very uh, high risk, but also high reward. And that's the game we're playing. We're big boys and girls. Let's move on. Right. So I also have the mouse in the right area, doesn't it? Day Trading Club, designing a customized day trading playbook. This is a great quote. Um, your results are the product of either personal focus or personal distractions. The choice is yours. And wow, wow, how apt is that for trading? You can get distracted with the market, another video, another this, another that, another webinar even. You know, you, but it's focus. It's like, hey, I'm going to learn this and I'm going to go and implement it. I'm going to focus on what I know I need to do. The right market, the right setup, the right environment, the mindset, um, and just keeping things dialed in. Interestingly, I was speaking at an event uh, recently and a, a trader came up to me and said, hey, hey, listen, I'm really struggling with strategy. Maybe you're on the call. Um, I was struggling with strategy. No, no, that's not true. I've got a strategy, but I'm struggling with discipline. What do I do? I was like, just focus on that. Okay, I said more, more than this. But it's like, hey, narrow your focus and just do that. Just focus on sticking to your rules for one day and then two and then three. Don't do anything else. Don't worry about anything else. Just focus on that and it'll work. Oh, he listens. So anyway, um, okay, the trader's challenge. So we have this scenario, right? We have this scenario, which you're probably in because I was in it and I see traders in it. Your mind is cluttered with too much information. You've just got so much in there. You've got no real plan of action. Maybe you sign of start for the trading plan. Maybe you kind of have a, some sort of process, but you're flip-flopping around. You've got a lot of experience and a lot of screen time, right? You've got that there but it's just not working for you as you want. Are you unsure of which strategy or setup you know, you, you're going to deploy? Let me just move you a little bit closer, if that's better. You're unsure of which strategy or setup to deploy, and you feel like you're going around in circles. And, and really, this is the key point. Your knowledge is not translating to p &L. So let's fix that today. Two-part series, by the way, should mention that. And, and that's really so I can get as much information, but not just ram it all in, because there are lots to cover. And, ho and well, hopefully you will, at the end of this and at the end of – I'm going to give some homework as well. At the end of part two as well, end of to both parts, you will have a, a way to build a process that's repeatable. That's the whole point. And this clutter will disappear. So what's the solution? The solution is to develop a trading playbook that's just bespoke for you. So we're going to define a focus goal of where you're headed, build a clear structured trading process that supports that goal, and then create a repeatable methodology. And that's going to give you clarity, confidence, and most importantly, for many traders, this is so, so key to convert that screen time and experience and knowledge to actual results, right? That's the key. You've probably got so much sitting there in your brain, you know, all the setups, you know, all the ideas, you know, everything probably, you've read loads of books, but it's just not translating to where you want to be. That's because there's so much. And what we're going to do is we're going to strip out all the nonsense and maybe you utilize that at some point in the future. But for now, I'm going to show you the framework of how to define the goal, create that structured process, create the repeatable methodology. Okay, so today we're going to go through decision-making flowchart as a trader, 
how do we calibrate to the market context that's so important how do we then construct the daily roadmap so this is the process that you're going to build how we generate the trade ideas and this modular approach approach to trading that i really really like i get a lot of value from thinking like this and i hope you will too um it's a really good way of having clarity in trading rather than bundling everything together and go my trading we separate it out into different structures of this module and that module and this module and preparation and trade idea generation and execution and so that you can make tweaks and adjustments with one module without it upsetting everything else we'll more on that in a moment but that's a really good i think powerful way of thinking about your trading but ultimately it's it, you know you you're treating this seriously right like any serious endeavor it has lots of moving parts and to look at it a whole is fine and to look at your PL is fine to a certain extent but that really doesn't give you any way to diagnose the issues whereas when you break it down into different modules and different compartments you can diagnose where the issue is work on that and then move forward it's like a car you go oh, it's moving forward that's great well it's not moving why is it not moving you just throw the whole car away and start rewiring the engine and changing the engine and changing the body and all this stuff you go no let me diagnose the issue ah the issue is an electrical fault it's a sensor right let me fix that sensor you get the idea but more on that in a moment so that's today next week just to give you an idea we're going to go through trade trigger selections give you a couple of mean reversion setups that i like some momentum ignition ideas how to construct your own personal trading playbook that you can build from and using that modular basis so risk management tactics and i go to our market sessions indicated i think you're going to really enjoy as well getting uh, on your trading view charts so more on that next week okay so the objective what's our objective and i'm going to move quite quickly so stick with me and again q a if you want to uh there is a section for that somewhere and a copy of this will be sent to you as well doesn't mean bail i'd rather you stay here because if you stay here you're going to be able to feel it you can ask me the questions and all this type of stuff but you will get a copy of the recording if you miss something if someone comes in with your tea or whatever it may be i get it right objective get you a clear process to prepare for the trading day construct your trading plan trade that trading plan and then review that's all you need that's all we need and so let's build that now so first of all define your goal okay and i did a video uh, sorry not a video we when pepperstone doing the pepperstone talks in 2021 so it's like at the tail end of covid um it was an online and one of the things i talked about was becoming the trader you want to be and there was a link to that and it's on the pepperstone youtube channel um if you struggle to define your trading goal this may help i think this will help and it helps you define what you're trying to achieve, what your thoughts are, what your actions are, how we align those to get what we want out of trading. But defining where you're headed is so, so important. If you don't have that and you don't have that North Star that you're trying to make every, every it's just kind of filtering every trading decision, you end up doing things that aren't going to serve you and aren't going to head to where, and, and they kind of contradict. So an example might be, oh, do I take profits now? Should I go into this trade? Well, actually, if it's a short-term scalp trade, you're not trying to become a scalper, then the answer is no. I'm not trying to become this because this is going against what I'm trying to do, which is hold trades longer, for example. Maybe it's the other way around. So defining your goal is paramount before we even start to construct this roadmap for you or this this, this structure. Is okay, what do I want out of trading? What am I trying to achieve? So, yeah, uh, if you go to the Pepperstone channel and then uh, put into the search bar, become a trader, I'm sure it will, it will pop up. And I think it's worth watching. And, um, and by the way, if you know your goal already, don't bother watching it. But if you don't know, you need some help with that, I think is a good one. I really enjoyed producing that. I really enjoyed kind of sharing that. And it's something that's helped me loads. OK, so the modular approach, the modular approach is this. Right. I'm getting all excited by this because I know this is you're going you're gonna to get value from this. This is going to make you move forward. Pre-market prep, we want to calibrate and adjust to conditions. The first thing we do, right. What's the market doing? How do I calibrate and adjust the conditions? Am I expecting trend? Am I expecting range bound? What have you? Trade idea generation. Then we come up with our idea generation for the day. The key levels and the zones we want to do business at. We're going to go more into structure and into depth of this in a moment, just an overview. Then our trade filters. What needs to happen at those levels and zones to consider an entry? The trigger. What's the final pattern that we see? The candlestick pattern or break or whatever we need to see to trigger the trade. And the review process document adjust improve and we repeat so we have these modular approaches you can see the power of these is that rather than looking at our trading as just the PL, which i think doesn't serve us is we now look at it in these little sections of the trading approach this, this has got to be looked at this has got to be looked at it's that modular approach all right so 
Number one, calibration. We need to calibrate to current market conditions. Okay, our objective is to align with the conditions that we're given. So we're going to check with the higher time frames. We're going to check the prior day's price action. We're going to check the expectations for the day, or we're, or we're going to come up with expectations for the day. This is where the intuition and the and the skills and the experience of being a trader comes in, right? We assess the headline risk. We define the market driver. We outline a rough plan for the day. That's our calibration. Uh, those steps to calibrating what we're going to do, and it's important. Again, in the moment, we're going to kind of say, "Hey, listen, I'll give you some ideas on how you do it. Create your personal way of doing it. You don't have to copy what I say. You come up with what's aligned with your goals, and that's what's super important." Okay, so the next step we look at is to generate the trade ideas for the day. So you know, rather than going into the day and just being beholden to conditions, and now we have to adjust, we have to recalibrate. There's a section on when we recalibrate to conditions, but we can't just be reacting to every little price movement. When there's a candle spiking up, when price is doing some running away, you can't just be sucked into a trade. We have to be prepared. We have to be anticipating and ready to do business at levels that we want to do business at, whether we are looking to break, whether we are looking to fade, whatever we're looking to do, we have to be prepared. Now, we could be completely wrong about what we're trying to do in the day, and that's when our recalibration comes in. But anticipating rather than reacting is, is the way to be you know, much more in control of your trading. You know, the market is very, very good at getting you to do things you don't want to do. It's very, very good at doing that. It's very good at making new shiny little movements and going, oh, look, I'm going to rip off to the highs. You better get long. And then reversing on you. It's very good at doing this type of stuff. And so to combat this is coming up with the trade ideas and generating the themes that you want to do for the day. And it doesn't matter if it's wrong, which we'll look at in a moment, but it's being able to take control of your battle plan. That's what's interesting. So we define the price action expectations, the expected range, the levels in play, levels to do business, where we think the daily chart may look at the end of the day, and then we come up with the trade idea generation process in a moment. But number three is our filters and triggers. So defining the required price action patterns. So what I mean by this is if we have our levels, we have our zones, you know, what sort of time would we want that to be in that zone? If the market rips off to this level straight away, do we want to fade it or would we rather wait until lunchtime drift up? You know, how long has it taken to get there? What's the context of price getting there? Is it running, running straight to that level? And we want to take that kind of extension or do we want to see it chugging and failing? What's the idea? And the trigger set up need to execute. And um, those will be more in the second week, next week, same time next week. But that's really like, okay, I want to see maybe the high break comes down, breaks the low, or it's engulfing, or it's a first pull, or something, some little trigger that's a very, very binary outcome. So you, you now you're building your process all up. And the final thing is review. So we want to assess the performance, the conditions, the calibration, how we executed, management mindset, document adjust. Okay. This gives us the modular framework that we need to work with. You know, rather than being so, so myopic and focused on the PL and the PL and the PL and the PL, which is important, right? That's why we're doing this. But being then focused on the on the area that needs your attention, that's when you can make the changes. Rather than, oh, it's all broken, it's all broken. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that, the other, I'm gonna try this strategy, I'm gonna try holding my trades, I'm gonna try adding to trades, I'm gonna try widening my stop. No, no, no. What is the issue at? Is it the pre-market calibration? Is it your triggers? Is it your trade idea generation? So let's look at this, how we could do this. So what's important to you? So what type of trader are you becoming? You want to be a scalper? You want to be a day trader? Are you one trade a day, five trade a day? You know, again, it comes back to the goal, alignment with your goal. But what's important to you? Things are important to me, higher time frame. I want to see where the pressure is. Today's a great example, right? Higher time frame, trend is solidly up at the moment, especially if you look at NASDAQ. So any low movement, that's probably going to be an area to look to do business. If we start to come down to a level that I've already earmarked, I'm, I'm probably interested because the higher time frame pressure is up. Unless I'm thinking exhaustion and I'm, I'm reading it differently. But you, that's important to me. And maybe that's important to you. News, what news is coming out? It's got to be important at the moment, right? It's driving the market. Inflation, expectations, the jobs numbers, the CPI, the interest rate, all that stuff is driving the market. You don't have to be you know, really, really up to it, up to speed with things. You can just get a brief of what's happening, what news is expected. And you can listen to some of the, the, the Pepperstone guys. You know, we do some great content on what to expect and kind of decipher some of that stuff for you. 
the economic calendar, what's coming up is a headline risk. What's the overnight session done? That's important to me. Prior session, what's the prior session? Was it narrow range? Was it volatility expansion? Did we go high to low day? What was it? And related markets. That's not important to me, but it might be to you. Maybe you like to look at the correlated markets. Maybe you like to look at things that are, that are useful to you. Maybe you are interested in you know the dollar index pay, plays a part in how you decide to take your trades. I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong. I'm just here to say, build a calibration process for you. There's the calibration module. What are the steps you take to get calibrated to the conditions? Because if you're incorrectly calibrated, you're going to mess up. Right? If you think it's going to be a trend day and you start trying to buy breakouts and it's a range bound day, you're going to get stopped. Now, it's not to say we all are going to get it right, but the better we can get a calibrating to expected conditions and the type of environment, the levels that might be tested, the more likely we are to get a better trade. Right? It makes it's common sense. Okay, so now the roadmap. So what's important to you and your range expectations for the day, your key levels, not just minors, little NAF levels that maybe you have touched once, and big key levels are important. Expected time of swing points. So this is probably another deep dive topic for another day, but we, know we get rotations at certain times of the day. It's no coincidence we have you know, rotations today just after that European close. European close starts and then, okay, everyone's done and dusted, off we go. We're going to now rotate back to VWAP, back to opening print, whatever. This is not an unusual thing. There's patterns to these, to the indices that you, being experienced, can can recognize and say, hey, well, actually, I don't want to take it too early because we're in doing trend mode. I don't want to fade a key level when we've got, you know, 15 minutes to go before the close. I want to, you know, there's, there's times of day you want to take these levels. There's times of day that you won't. What's the day type expectation? The daily chart candle. So the daily chart candle is really you using your skills, using your intuition, your experience to say, hey, can I see a big red candle today? Could I see a doji? What could I see? How could I how would I look on the chart? Would that make sense with the structure and the context of price? And if that answer is yes, then you can kind of work back from that. That again, that's just something that you build over time. And it's something that you probably do already. You probably look at the daily chart and go, Hey, you know what? We could easily rip to the upside from here. That could be a solid green candle, low to high day. Yeah, I'm going to position for that. All right. So your filters and triggers. So what are your trade ideas? So and we're going to go through. We're going to go through two examples in a moment. So if this is like, oh, I'm not sure where we are with this. You hopefully it'll become clear in a moment with a detailed example. So now we're in the next mo the next kind of module of your process is so my trade ideas. So the calibration for the day. The areas I potentially want to do business in my zones and my potential ranges, and I'll show you the kind of process for doing that. And then what trade ideas do I want from there? So is there a level I want to get long at? Is there a level I expect it to turn at or could turn at? You know, how do, how far do I expect the opening drive to go? And by the way, this is you know indices, this is forex, this is anything you're trading, you're still doing the same. But you know, even if you're looking at the prior day, the Asian session, and you're coming into you know, your session that you're trading, you're saying, hey, what was the range of the Asian session, et cetera. And I'm going to use an example of Forex as well as uh, NASDAQ in a moment. Time of the first large rotation, VWAP extensions, if you're using VWAP excursion away from the open, all this type of stuff, you know, this is going to help you formulate this plan. Okay, so best if we use an example and run through this process. Okay. And by the way, I put a little, a little star there that says, don't be afraid to use intuition here mixed with logic. We're not trying to create a systematic trader. And if you want to create a systematic trading approach, fine. You do that, but you have a different framework, a different goal, a different way of doing it. And that's and that's fine. It's another way to trade. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're a discretionary trader, then absolutely you should use some of that intuition. You should harness some of that. You should learn to you know, trust it and listen to the voice that's the intuition versus the voice that's maybe not serving you and try to mix that with a process to come up with you know your edge okay so this was taken actually I, when i put these slides together i think it was last week so we're a couple of days behind the curve but the process is the, the same no matter so i start off my daily chart right i've got the nasdaq and it's a cfd product that pepperstone offer of the nasdaq equivalent uh and i look at my daily chart and i make some assumptions from that now i check my calendar so i've gone the calendar and i see what's coming up and i go okay jobless coming up is that the important yeah reasonably important Okay, maybe you want to wait for that. Maybe that's going to create some new levels. Okay, this is you know, it's hopefully it's simple stuff, right? So this is like 101 of prep. We're not doing anything pioneering here. We're just making sure there's no headline risk. We're not getting involved in something that's just going to sit there and wait until um, 
you know, news comes out, it's going to trade very differently after news. We're just doing normal stuff. We're doing the higher time frame analysis. You're doing your levels, you, where you are, you know, in, indicators are important to you. If you look at indicators, just, just simple stuff. Economic calendar, headline risk, bang. Okay. Now there's a 15 minute chart. I want to see what happened yesterday. I want to see what happened overnight. So I start to make my assessments. I start to, and by the way, I'm going to give this tool, this session range tool that I've got. Um, okay, this is the, the prior the prior session, the overnight session. Mark this up as London session. This is what's happened overnight, the overnight session. Okay, before we open, what's the range of it? Where have we started? Where have we ended? What's the theme of it? This is my process. So doom, 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 running through. Very simple. I'm doing this. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing this. And what I infer from this is or what you infer from this is up to you. This is where your skill comes in. You know, I could sit here and say, well, you know, listen, that, you know, it's extended away from the VWAP. It looks like it's about to open at lows. You know, if jobless claims doesn't come out very good, we might, we'll probably end up retesting those Fed lows the day before. But well, I can come up with this narrative, but that's not for me to do. That's for me to do for my trading. You have the process and then you go, right, what do I, what is this telling me? What information is this giving me that's going to help me formulate a plan moving forward? That's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to be clever. We're not trying to be smart. We're not trying to predict anything. We're just trying to say, okay, what's this telling me? And this is, again, going back to the point of what's your goal and what's your process, this might not be something you care about. You might be like, hey, I don't care what happened in the Asian session. I'm trading the USDJPY. I don't care. What I'm interested in is the weekly chart or the data or something. But whatever it is, it's calibrating conditions. I want you to do something, a process that helps you calibrate to conditions that you fulfill every day and is a non-negotiable module that you do and say, right, I am now calibrated. I feel like I've got a, the best possible chance of aligning myself with the right conditions. Great. And then I move on. So I'm trying to get a feel, right? I'm trying to get a feel. Where could price go? How could it get there? What's a great trade idea, right? And I might start to then go, okay, yesterday we had FOMC. We're up here, blah, blah, we're away from the VWAP. That's a key level up there. And I start to build this idea. And then there's something that is I find useful. So I look at my expected range for the day. I've got a full example in a second, and I'm going to plot that on the chart. So get your daily candle and get your ATR. Now, if you're using the CFD product from, from Pepperstone, you, ATR is fine. But if you're using, say, SPY or Qs to calibrate yourself, then use ADR because that's going to ignore the gaps. So now you create a price range. So we get your ATR. I use 10 our default's 14. It doesn't matter what the hell you use, but that just gives you the, it's a rough way of giving you the expected range of the day, right? Again, use ADR if you're, you're not interested in the gaps, but it gives you an idea. Is it 200 pips? Is it 50 pips? Is it 1,000 pips? You start to go, hey, that's that's the average. It's not definitely what it's going to do, but that's the average over the last 10 days, 14 days, or whatever you calibrated to. So now we can start to create something and have an idea of where we could test Right. And this is simple process, but it's super valuable. I'm telling you, it's super, super valuable. This calibration process will do so much more for your trading. It'll keep you out of those naff trades that you keep getting sucked into just by saying, hey, there's no chance of it hitting that. Or the chance, never no chance in the market. Market does what it wants. But the chance of that is slim. I'm going to position for this instead. And you start to think a bit more clearly, act like a general looking down, you know, rather than right on the front line getting caught up in all the all the battles and stuff. So we create a price range, we add it to our daily chart, we mirror that, we see what levels it brings into play, and we build trade ideas from that. Let's show you what happens here. Hopefully, you can see this. I've Maybe I should have crammed so much on. Anyway, so what I've done now is I've gone, right, the ATR for the day or expected range, I'm expecting the range to be about 220 points on the NASDAQ, right? That's just an ATR, 10 period, and I've got that at the bottom there, and you can just... You, Hopefully, you know, put that on your chart, right? So now in trading views, especially, it's a price range tool. And I've got a price range there where I've gone, right, give me a 220-point range and 221.9, whatever, you know, close enough, okay? And I've said, right, I'm going to place that at key points. So the open, I'm going to place that at the low. I'm going to see, I'm going to see where the range could be. And in this case, I'm looking and I'm reviewing the market just before the US open, right? Just before that data, about midday. We've already had the overnight session. I've already looked at the range of that. I've already looked at the, the, the importance of that, how it's related to the daily chart. But now what I'm doing is I've got that range. I've used that, rate, that, that price range tool. 
And I've said, okay, 220 points. Okay, if I if that's the high of the day, where could we go on average the downside? Can you see what we're doing here? We're saying if I'm expecting this to continue on down, we could very easily come to the low. And actually, it happens to coincide with that Fed low from the day before. So I go, aha, right. If we do an average range of 220 points and it's average, it could be way more, could be way less. But that's an average thing. We could easily touch that level. So I might then go, ah, that actually coincides with the Fed low. Okay, that's a level I might want to do business at. That's a level I might want to wait to get long at. I'm starting to build the roadmap. Or I then go, okay, let me get that range. Let me put the lower end of the range now and assume that if we rallied from now, where would that take us? Actually, would break out to new highs. So you start to say, where is trade going to occur? And what key levels have we got within that? And what trade ideas can I come from that? It is a valuable, valuable process. And yeah, there's tools out there that automate this for you, but there's nothing, nothing beats you going, hey, I'm drawing this on manually. I want to feel that sucker. I want to feel exactly what the chart is telling me. And I want to get an idea of where that's going to go today. Where are you going to go, pal? Where are you going to go? You know what? If you drift down to that level, yeah, that's the HR of the day. That's pushing your luck to go any further. Maybe if it dips below and mops back up, I'll take that. I'll look for at least a retracement because, you know, chance of the buyers, uh, you know, not stepping in a little bit there are probably low. That's, that's a reasonable probability. I'll take that trade. I start to build a roadmap. I start to have an expectation of where trade could go. And I start to think where the levels, the key levels of interest are. And I go, OK, that's interesting. Now, what, what do I do? What do I want to do from that? OK, so from there, I start to map out my ideas. And yes, I know, as I say here, it does look like a toddler has drawn these on with a crayon. I know that. But it's that stupid little tool with trading view where you've got that little brush and you try and do it with your mouse. There's, there's better ways of doing it. I'll show you in a moment. There's the ghost feed you can do in a moment, which looks a little bit better, which is this. But anyway, go back to this. You're drawing on some ideas. So now you've calibrated. You calibrate into conditions. You've got an idea where trade could go. We never know, right? We're not going to say this is not this is not a silver bullet, but we've got an idea, average where the range is going to be. What levels does that bring into play? What layers do I want to potentially consider doing business at? And how could trade get there? So this is where you kind of let your artistic side which for me as you can see is pretty pretty minimal come out and go okay how could trade get there you know we could just go straight down and i'll take a long at that level and we pop back up we could maybe attempt to go higher and sit there i i, I start to think of different ways price could get to that level then i come up with another trade idea another one i think about different ways you know based on experience how price could do what i wanted it to do and then would i initiate a trade from that and you can use, as I say, this ghost feed tool in trading. It's a little bit, a little bit nice if you want to be a little bit more professional about it. Um, you've got this, and you come up with different ideas and different ways. And I think the, the value of this is that it helps you visualize in your mind how potentially price could get there. And so when you see it, you go, okay, this is feasible. This is something that I that I, I might consider taking. Uh, so you can use that ghost feed tool, or you can use crayon, you know, or that paint tool. All right. So we've got our ideas. We 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 hopefully calibrating. Um, you know, I know I know where price could potentially go. Where's average? So I start to now draw levels of interest. And it, this is an example. This would be a level of interest for me, right? And it happens to coincide with the the ATR range. Happens to be a decent swing low point. There's that high level breakout. Okay, I'm framing ideas. I'm building stuff in. It's a 15 minute chart I'm using of, of the Nasdaq. So. So I've now come up with two or three scenarios, and this is your job. Calibrate, you start to adjust and adapt. You start to put your areas of interest in using that ATR, using the ATR, put your boxes in, put your levels in. Now come up with two or three scenarios. This is now where you ponder and consider where trade could go and what trade ideas you'd like to take, or what trade ideas you could take. We're not there yet. We've got the filters and triggers to go, but we're coming up with ideas and themes. And we're doing it based not in the heat of the moment. We're not getting seduced by price swinging around. We're doing it based on logic and intuition in the cold, calm pre-market. We're thinking about a considered way to trade this beast, whatever we're trading. This is why I think you know spreading yourself too thin over a moment instruments is tricky because you've got to do this for everything. So I come up with two or three scenarios. Example: opening drive lower. Maybe we bounce once on my level. I've got my level, and imagine that was my level, right? So I've got that level. I go right. 
let me think of ideas of how I could want to trade that lower level, that 14,800 level to 14,750 uh, level. Forget about the high one for now. Let's think of the low one. So scenarios, how could it get there? And again, this is kind of going back to this, the crayon. Right? I'm thinking, how could it get there? And what, how would I want to trade these? So here we go. So do I get an opening drive lower? It bounces once. It retests. Wicks. I might want to trade that. Yeah, if it bounces, if it drives lower, hits that level, finds some support, pops off, comes back, retests, wicks through, then comes back up. The classic double bottom pattern with a bit of time and duration, duration in between. I, I'd, I'd be like, you know what? I'm interested in that. I'd start to jot that, note that down. That's a good trade for me. That's got my trade set up. It's got my filter. It's got my trigger. That's interesting. Okay, maybe a rotational open. What happens if it grinds down to support and grinds higher? I might be like, you know what, mm, difficult to structure a stop. If it does that, mm, maybe I'll watch and, and say if it goes lower and takes it, it comes back up, maybe I'll leave it. Okay, I'll leave that one. Okay, what about the rally? What if it rallies hard, pulls back, you know, sorry, pulls back hard to the open, which is the upside in that example, stalls. What do I want to do with that? Do I want to take that? How, you know, so how are you reacting in positioning um, in each of these scenarios? And this is important to have rehearsed these and, and think clearly about these trade ideas. So let's give you another one for USDJPY. Same type of thing, right? We we get the ATR for the day and we go, okay, the ATR for the day, that's reasonable, right? That's a reasonable width. We've got a decent number of pips there because it's been swinging. It's been going quite, it's been moving on quite a bit at the moment. Fine, that's good. So now we go, all right, let me take the ATR and let me start to extrapolate that on the daily. And by the way, in trading view, you can have it so that it mirrors on the lower chart. So that example back up here, uh, where were we, where were we, where were we, where were we? Did I go past it? Probably didn't need to bring this up. That example there, that's automatically done on my five minute. So I do it on my daily, I get my daily, I chunk it, I put the price range in, and there's a tool, I don't know if I'm quite sure what it is. And, you know, I can tell you live what that is. You can do uh crosshair i think and that sinks in the layout in fact that's exactly what it does so i'm pretty sure it i oh, know you know what it is it's you can double click on the on the actual price range and then you can say duplicate in the different areas so minutes seconds daily etc so that mirrors that for you across so you can actually see your levels out to draw them in but you can draw them manually if you want anyway so now i'm kind of coming up with the ideas for the day i'm going okay my range for usd jpy I'm bear with me a second, ladies and gents. I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, you can now get your ATR and go, my level's going to be here, my level's going to be here. That's the range I'm expecting for the day. Let me look at the pre-market. And pre-market for USDJP, my why might be what was the London session? What did the Asian session do? What was the prior New York session? I'm going to give you the sessions indicator, by the way. You can I'll give you access to this uh next webinar. I'll give you a link for that. But you now have an idea and you're and again personal to you you're calibrating to the conditions that are right for you and you're going okay hmm london session was we didn't really break out of the asian session low okay we pulled, you start to build a framework an idea and as, as the same thing as we did with the, with the nas brought over that atr range and go hey if I expect the range, oh, well, I'm analyzing this, by the way, later. I'm not analyzing at one o'clock in the morning. I'm analyzing in this uh, midday, waiting to potentially trade this at the US Open and see if there's any more mileage in it. And I look at this and go, hey, this has already done the expected range for the day quite quickly. What does that mean? Does that mean that we're going to break higher? Do I really want to chase this thing? Probably not. Or do I want to fade it? Do I want to wait? Do I want to leave it? Do I want to even touch this thing? But you're starting to calibrate to the conditions rather than just looking at it in a single focus and going, oh, it's driven up. And it's, it's like, yeah, but it's already done the range for the day and more. You know, how much more has it really got? It's USD JPY. It's not some crappy little biotech that could strip off 100%. You know, they, they do do big moves, right? Currency players do do big moves. But what am I really expecting? What is the, you know, what is the big thing here? And they're probably not going to be much more. And actually, in this instance, it did roll back. But that's by the by. Hindsight's fine. But at least now you're calibrating and going, hmm, you know what? What's my trade idea? Maybe I leave it. Or actually, you know what? Maybe there's an opportunity to fade this if you wanted to get short. Or maybe I want to wait for at least to come back to that prior high before even looking for a scalp long. You start to build the ideas and framework. Okay, so you're building a roadmap. You're looking at the range. You're checking your headline risk. 
you're checking your key levels, you're generating your trade ideas. And then you have part of the roadmap is to when do I recalibrate? So when do I generate a new bunch of trade ideas based on what I've seen? So the price starts to chug and let's say you're trading open, it starts to move. You go, okay, do I need to generate new trade ideas? Am I recalibrating to different conditions? And this is your roadmap. So you go, okay, after an hour, I'm going to now generate some new trade ideas and anticipate if I'm completely wrong, that is, or I stick with what I've got. I'm waiting for that level to be hit. You're prepared. This is the key. Your preparation is on point. You're dialed in. You're ready. You're anticipating the move. You're not just reacting like every other amateur out there who's like, ooh, it's a sexy red candle. Let me get sure it's going to go through. Oh, well, I'm sending right into the lower end of the ATR. It's going to, it pops up, stops them out. You're prepared and, and you'll get better at building this roadmap. You'll get better at calibrating for conditions. You'll get better at assessing the levels that you're going to turn and the time you're going to turn and you're generating your ideas from that. That's the modular approach. And you can really then improve that and say, hey, I need to get better at calibrating. I'm not really calibrating. I'm not getting conditions right. I'm, I'm misjudging trend my environments, et cetera, et cetera. Or my trade ideas aren't that great. It's up to you to then dial in what you're trying to do and really get a grip on what's going wrong rather than that, oh, it's just not working for me. You've got a fighting chance. All right, so let's think of the summary, what we've got here. Embrace that modular approach to trading, okay? Calibration, calibrate to conditions, so, so important. I hopefully don't even convince you of this. If conditions are just range bound, you're looking for trends, you're gonna get nailed, it's right? It's just as simple as that. So you want to calibrate to conditions and bolt on the strategies that are effective for those conditions. Then we come up with our ideas. So that's the level, that's the high, that's the low, potentially on the day. The range is probably going to be this unless it breaks out and does a, a big trend day, which happens. It's not saying it's definitely going to stick in that range, but at least I've got a, an idea and I can build a roadmap. That's a level I might want to do business at. It could turn in there and rotate back before it tests again. Okay, what am I actually going to look for? Filters and triggers. We'll talk more on those next week. But what am I actually going to want to see? Do I want to see a break through the low, but then comes back up and I take it on a break through the high of the last five-minute candle? Do I want to see a wick that forms that's twice as, you know, I've got all these ideas of triggers and filters and then I review. So I do, I conduct a review of how I've performed. So calibrating self to conditions, generating trade ideas around those conditions. And this is the big thing. This is not a kind of step-by-step, -step, you must do this and do this and do this. Yes, it's a framework and a guide and hopefully, you know, you're gonna you, you take this and make it your own, but that's the key of using your market experience. Remember at the beginning, I was talking about, hey, you've got loads of market experience. It's not translating to the, to the traction you want. And being able to use that market experience to your advantage for a change, rather than it cluttering up your brain and being filled with noise and you know all this type of stuff that's not serving, you can go, hey, help me now. My experience, my screen time, you can help me now. Have I seen this before? You know what, I've seen this before. We could well easily pop off there. We could, we could probably dip through and pop back up. So your focus is now so narrow and you can pull on all those resources you've got to create these trade ideas. So generating trade ideas around those conditions. All right, so, oh, we're okay for time, good. Um, homework for next week. If you're interested, I'd like to do this. I'll ask you if you've done this. Construct your personal pre-market process, right? What do you do pre-market? How do you calibrate? What's your checklist for calibration and trade idea generation process? So go through that, get your pen and paper or word pad or whatever, and go, hey, you know what? This is how I'm going to calibrate. I'm going to look at the daily chart. I'm going to check for this, this, and this. I'm going to check my headline risk and my economic data calendar. I'm going to look at my overnight range. That's important to me. Or I'm going to look at the Asian session if I'm trading a currency, or one currency pair, whatever it may be. That's going to help me calibrate to conditions. The engine is inflation at the moment. Right, fine. What, what's this feeling on that? Okay, yeah. Trend is, oh, right, fine. Calibrated. Now, how do I generate my trade ideas? Do I use the ATR function? Am I interested in knowing the range of the day, expected range of the day, or, or normal range of the past 10 days is more an accurate way of putting it? And I'm going to then generate a trade idea from that. Or what, what do I say is a key level? Well, it's not a key level. You know, How do you generate your trade ideas? Maybe you prefer to trade the drive to those levels. Again, personal. It's not. I'm not saying you should fade these levels and it's going to, you know, that's always going to happen. But you might say, okay, if, it, if the range is X, then if I get a pullback halfway through that range that looks strong enough, I will take that because I think we're going to have a momentum day. You don't think we're going to go crazy, but I still think it's momentum off the open. 
or momentum after data or whatever it may be. So I'm going to buy a first pullback and my target is going to be the expected range of the day or the higher that expected range of the day. You can see how you can use that to then build your framework. And remember to align it with your trading goals, right? Watch that YouTube video if you need to, but just be uh, defined with, with your trading goals because if, honestly, you, it's very difficult to come up with trade ideas that are valuable if you're confused about what you're actually trying to do with your trading. Okay, so do that homework. Next week, we're going to look at specific strategies that we can adjust and maybe build that roadmap a little bit deeper and go a bit more in depth into that. So the calibration, the trade idea generation. Now with the specific strategies that we can deploy and the trade triggers that are going to execute those strategies. So we're not always, this a filter and trigger process. You guys know that I like that. If you don't, I do. I like the, the kind of seeing something that, okay, I'm interested in taking this. And now what do I need to see to actually pull the trigger and get into the deal? And we're also going to look at when we recalibrate and generate new trade ideas. That's important. We can't be stubborn with an idea and a theme if the market's just telling us something different. We have to be able to recalibrate. We don't want to be recalibrating all the time. We're not always looking at the market going, oh, what's it going to do? What's it going to do? That doesn't serve us. We have to have certain times when we recalibrate in the process for doing that. And then importantly, you know, using this modular approach, how we review each module, the calibration, the trade idea generation, the triggers, the filters, execution, how we review that and how we make the course corrections. So we want to adjust this. This is something we want to deploy for well, forever, potentially, right? And making these little adjustments to each of the modules as we go to improve rather than trying to make massive changes and going in this different direction. We're like, hey, you know, my execution needs a bit of work. Let me focus on that. What do I need to do? Why does why do I think that that needs work? Why do I think my calibration is incorrect? Why do I think I need to improve that process? Okay, that's what everything's fine for now. Let me work on that. And that's important because then we can deploy our resources, our focus, our energy on the main thing that's going to give us the best results. What's the biggest domino? The biggest domino you can knock over that will knock others over. And very often it's one or two things. All right. That's it, guys. By the way, if you, you uh, maybe you're on the daily email list, I send an email every day with a thought, an idea, something to look at, something to consider, sometimes a strategy, sometimes a mindset. Uh, you can check that out, tradersmastermind.com forward slash email. I do have time for questions. And there's a lot of slides in that, and I know I run through it very quickly. Hopefully, you've got some value from that. If there's any questions, I will happily take them if I can help you. I absolutely will. If I can't, I will probably try to guide you somewhere that uh, will help you because even though i've been trading a couple of decades now i don't have all the answers uh, but i probably know someone who does nice shirt mark thank you very much that's appreciated are we frozen or is it me i hope it's just you chris uh how do we how uh how do we measure volume in a given session or time frame how to how do you measure volume in a given session or time frame uh what's the question there you might have to rephrase that for me uh i, I guess you can you know, eyeball the volume eyeball the chart right and go okay is it bigger than normal but don't forget you're looking at it in relate volume is interesting thing volume is very much in relation to the prior uh same session so if you're looking at the asian session volume and by the way i know it's different for forex i know it's i know there's a contentious thing here of what is real volume unless you're trading on something from a direct exchange it's very different it's an approximation okay so we, we know that anyway so you have to accept that but you know it's a, re a reasonable approximation and you're going to say okay have we got more volume than we normally get in the asian session for example and that might be something you just eyeball on the chart you, know, you might just break down to a time frame that's easy for you to eyeball 60 minute 120 minute whatever it may be and go hey we've got some more volume um i would i'd be uh i like volume right but but very often when you get extended range you get big volume anyway it kind of goes hand in hand with what you see on the chart so when you see a big range you're going to get bigger volume when you've not done much you're going to get lower volume so you can tend you can tend to generally assume what volume is going to be um great webinar thank you very much to Ezzedine. how you doing pal thank you for your feedback andrew lake yes i'll sort your copy of the slides pal no problem uh, brian says which is the best youtube channel to learn <laughs> okay well you could, i've got some videos on uk spread betting if you go on there check that out uh I would say that's not, no, absolutely. there's some basic stuff there, but it's more intermediate stuff. Um, where else could you go to learn? Uh, maybe someone will comment on that and I'll tell you what other YouTube channels, but I've got some stuff, content on UK spread betting that you can definitely check out. Uh, 
Chris says it was his connection. <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, uh, uh, Pat has said, I haven't been receiving the replay links. I have emailed Pepperstone, but haven't received a response. How else can I access the replays? You know what, Pat? I will I will ask Pepperstone myself for you, and I'm sure that is an oversight by them. There is probably some reason, technical reason, why you're not getting those. Have you checked your junk? I guess you probably will check your junk already. Uh, but replay links do go out. Just double check as well the email. You must have had the email, I guess, because you're uh, on the on the um, on the webinar. But I will pat the. If you want to put your email in, bearing in mind other people can think they can see it, then then stick it in there, Pat, and I will I will take it up with them myself so that you can uh, they'll double check it for me. All right. Uh, where is the 2021 video that you did Pepperstone? I'd like to check it out. Royston says this. That is, if you go to the Pepperstone YouTube channel and put in become the trader you want to be in 2022. So obviously very uh, apt for wherever you are. Or very um, apt is the wrong word. I've been looking at markets all day and now I'm doing this and the word is escaping me. It's valuable, let's say, or it's useful in 2022 and 2023, wherever you are. So there's no real date on it. It was just that it was uh, for that. So, yeah, become a trader you want to be in 2022. If you go to Pepperstone's YouTube channel, and if you go to their main page, and then you can search on that channel, you'll find it there, Royston. Uh, Richard said a really good presentation. Again, thank you. Very useful. Appreciate that, Richard. For you. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your answer. That was spot on. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, Great as always, loving the beard, Mark Pauly said. Thank you, Mark. It's uh, definitely in full full swing now. Uh, Susan said, thank you. Uh, thanks, Mark, so much value here. I have a morning routine, but I know this will take it to another level and make me proactive, not reactive. I've been lazy, didn't have a plan. Now I do good. Good, good for you, Susan. You, you, you're looking at it and saying, okay, listen, it's not as good as it could be. I know that that's going to help me loads. So, And it's, sometimes it's not easy, right? The easy thing is to come in and just click away and trade. But this is where the, kind of the pre-market prep and the homework is where they, the edge is. Uh, Yulia said, all clear, great examples. Thanks for the TV hack. Working on creating that flow chart. Hope to get your feedback on it soon. Great. See you Thursday. Yeah, see, Yulia, you remember Trades Mastermind. I shall see you there. Mark Pauly said, uh, might need to leave the Just for Men alone for a few weeks. <laughs> yes. Well, these little gray bits in the beer, I think it was a mixture, Mark, of experience and youth, I like to think. <laughs> uh okay would i love love a copy of the deck too please susan's put yes we'll try and arrange that for you susan uh okay well, this is good thanks a good start looking forward to next week thank you mark uh they are posted on their youtube chris b said i have the same issue about the replay links if you can ask for myself too uh yes okay mark i don't know i'll double check maybe there's some something happening where they're not going out as they should do uh maybe it's a setting or something but I will definitely take that up. So Mark and Pat, okay. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, please send the replay links to Busy Woman. What a what a cool uh, email address. Busy with a Z or Z if you're from America. Busy Woman at Gmail dot com. Okay, Susan, I'll try, uh, Susan, Pat, I'll sort that out for you. Um, Jed said, "Hi, Mark. Brilliant webinar so far. My first one from yourself. Welcome, Jed." I focus on scalping the one minute and have a very simple price action support resistance strategy. I use the 15-minute the chart and the daily chart for my market research, giving me a trend incentive for the day. The daily, I usually look back up to two weeks. What do you think of this for scalping? My results have been making me break even on most trades. Do you have any advice on this? I would, honestly, Jed, personal opinion, slow it down. Slow it down, pal. You know, if whatever you're doing, halve the frequency of trades. Funny enough, last night, went out for a curry with a couple of traders in Ron and Pizza, you guys, some of you guys know them. Um, and one of the things we said is, listen, we just, you, it's amazing when you see traders when they just slow down the frequency of trades, how the results change. And so, you know, for you, I think the process is fine, but, you know, without even knowing, and again, this is me just, you know, making a stab and, and not having a, an accurate assessment perhaps on your individual circumstance, but scalpers tend to overtrade. So if you can just really be, you know, cautious about the points you're going to get involved in, you know, I think you'll find more value from that, and I think that that will help you more. So just slowing things down, Jed, easily, calm, picking your spots, that type of thing. Uh, Royston says, thank you, Mark. I've enjoyed this session. Look forward to it. Guys, thanks for the feedback. It's much appreciated, honestly. Uh, you know, I love talking about trading. I love sharing things that I think are going to help you, and so it's great to see that you're enjoying it. Um, oh, another person not been receiving the, the recordings. Uh, let me jot this down as well. I think there's a copy of the chat. I should be able to get this, but... 
I will jot this down too. That is, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to be a smart trader and just screenshot that. There you go. Save me jotting it down. <laughs> what a genius. Uh, would you use indicators when setting conditions and setting entry points or both? Or what indicators do you recommend? Uh, we'll go through that next week. We'll go through that next week, Elvis. Good question. Cool name as well. Jed, I'm not going to focus on pre-market trading plan as mine is not as good as it should be. Oh, I am going to. I was like, oh, Jed, Jed, Jed. <laughs> you are going to. Good for you. Yeah, pre-market plan. Get yourself calibrated. It's so important, man. And when you do it, you'll go, ah, well, that, that, that really helps me loads. You're confident to execute, pull the trigger and stuff. Um, so good. Good for you. Thank you, Jed. Um, pardon the YouTube channel, Brian. Uh, it's called Distinguished. Yes. Thank you, Susan, the beard. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark Pooley. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beth. I'm glad you guys are finding value from it. Everyone said most people are saying thank you, uh, which is good. You do force trade sometimes, Jed says, working on discipline. Good for you. Yeah, get that get that dialed in and you'll be you'll be you'll be there. Um all right. Thank you, ladies and gents. We're a little bit early, but why not? We've hopefully covered everything. We're back again next week, same time, 6 p.m. for part two of this. I will ensure that these replays have gone out. And if not, I will personally email those two of you who said you're not getting the replays, but there may be maybe some issue in some settings somewhere. So apologies for that, but we'll get it sorted. But thanks for coming. See you again next week. Tell your friends if you like this. Implement, do your homework. I'll be checking. All right. Where's this go to me at webinar button? There it is. No, it's not. There it is. I can never find it. All right. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.